Hello guys, welcome back. So we're going to continue on with uh, section 9.1, Intro to Functions. And, but today we're going to focus on uh, graphing. Um, and to kind of relate back to the last video, how we can represent relations and functions, uh, well that could be um, a number of things. So remember that could be ordered pairs, which we sort of talked about last time. That could be a table. It could be an equation. Um, the mapping diagrams that you saw last time. Or, again, they could be represented in a graph. Okay, so that is what we are going to focus on today. All right, so let's continue on. I have given you five scenarios, uh, or five situations. I've put, um, you know, certain graphs uh, to display whether that is a function or not. Um, what a tool that you guys can use is called the vertical line test. Now what the vertical line test does, it's a tool that can determine whether each of these or any of these are a function or not. So remember, function, you have one x for one unique y. Um, and what happens here, if I can show you for a, is if we put a vertical line Will that vertical line touch that graph, this red line, anywhere more than once? So if we go along from left to right, it does not touch anywhere on that red line more than once. So again, go back to what a function actually means. One x for one unique y. Okay, so x's cannot repeat. So if we go on to b, if we go from left to right, your x's will not have more than one y. Okay? If we go into C, so A and B so far are functions. If we go into C, if I go from left to right, well, guess what? This chopstick here, which is I'm using for my vertical line test, that will end up being touched twice here and here. Okay? Let's call this line negative 3. So negative 3 would have um, two y's in this case. So let's call this um, negative 3, 4, and let's call this negative 3, negative 3, okay? So again, your x value is being repeated and does not have one unique y. So this, using the vertical line test, would not be a function. Go on to D, again, from left to right, is it a function or not? Well. This does not touch the red line or our graph more than once. E, which is a absolute uh, value um, equation or absolute value of graph, does not touch more than once. So this would be a function. So everything is a function except for C. So just a quick example here, just to kind of um, lay the foundation. Um, we are given f of x. And again, whenever you see f of x, you can equate that to y. Uh, we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, or again, x is being map mapped to y. So a number on the x-axis has an output of something on the y-axis, okay? And again, if you do this, if you put an input, you will get outputs. Input, output, input. So eventually, you will have something like uh, an ordered pair, uh, where you can graph this ordered pair onto your coordinate graph. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and try a couple of these out, and then we'll determine, and again, I mean, this would be a function just by looking at the equation, but just so we get the idea of how to go about um, our x inputs and y outputs. So if we say f of 1, we put our input. So f of 1 ends up being 3. So again, this has, and we can represent this as, 1 as our x value and 3 as our y value. So we, this is ready to be a graph. Let's put on 2. Two, so 2, so f of 2 is equal to 5. So input 2 and output is 5. Okay, you can keep going, going with that. But again, just to kind of wrap this up, we have 1 and 3, 2 and 5. Um, and again, you can keep going. Negative numbers, uh, greater numbers than uh, 2. But eventually, 
as you can see, this would eventually just be a function and a linear representation, linear graph of, a, of 2x plus Find by g, where x is mapped to 3 minus 2x, with the a to the graph of y, um, which is equal to 3 minus 2x. There's two parts to this problem. Uh, let's look at the first part. So range of g, which corresponds to the domain, uh, which is between negative 1 and 2. Negative 1 and 2, it contains uh, where x is an element of all real numbers. Okay, so let's, let's think about the question first. Again, the range of g corresponding to the domain, here's our domain, we need to find the range of what uh, our inputs are. So it's between negative 1 and 2. Okay, so remember, we need to go ahead and uh, put our inputs first to find out what our outputs are graphically. So we have g of x, which is 3 minus 2x. Let's put our in our domain, which starts with the, our endpoint of negative 1. So let's say g of negative 1 is equal to 3 minus 2, input negative 1. So what is g of negative 1? It ends up being negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So this ends up being our input negative 1 has an output of 5. So that would determine that our coordinate is negative 1 and 5. Okay, let's go to our other endpoint, which is 2. So g of 2. this line. Okay? And again, think about the question, the range. Th what is the range? So find the range given our domain is between negative 1 and 2. So we have negative 1 and 5. And we have 2, negative 1. Okay? So when it comes to its range, again, Range goes from bottom to up or up to bottom. You're looking at it vertically. So our range would end up being, let's put this in a different color. So I have y is such that it's between, let's look at the bottom first. Where does it end up on the y-axis? It is at negative 1. If we keep going, it ends up at 5. So our range from bottom to up is between negative 1 and 5. Okay, so this is our range given the, the fact that our domain is between negative 1 and 2. All right, so let's do the second part of this question. Okay, the sec second part tells us to find the domain of G that corresponds to the range. So we have the range. It is between negative 3 and 2, okay, where y is an element of all real numbers. And again, it's important to know your vocab domain being our x values, range being our y values. So it has given us the range, it has given us the output, which is negative 3 and 2. So let's replace for this first scenario, let's replace f of x or y uh, for negative 3. We have to solve for this x. So minus 3, minus 3. Minus 6 is equal to minus 2x. And x is equal to 3. Okay, so think back. Let's go ahead and write this down. Our first coordinate. We had an output of negative three, and we our input. We found out our domain is three. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our second scenario, which says our output is two. All right. So for our second scenario, our output, our range is two. Let's go ahead and solve for our x. Our input, again, is 1 half, and our output was 2. Okay, so we have our two endpoints of this line. Let's go ahead and graph, so 3, negative 3, and we have 1 half and 2. All right? 
And again, think about the question. We are determining the domain of G. So domain, you're going from left to right. So I have from left, I have one half. And I keep going, keep going until I hit, again, our Y value, which is at three. This ends up being at, at three as well. So from left to right, we go from one half to three. So we would determine and write this as domain so x is such that x is between one half and three. All right, so here is your practice problem. Um, go ahead and make sure you have a graph along with answering A and B. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow.